Hello everyone. In this video, we talk about the Bayes theorem. Let's start with the conditional probability formula. Here we have the probability of B given A equals the probability of the intersection of B and A over the probability of A. Solving for the probability of the intersection of B and A, we get the probability of B given A times the probability of A. If we swap the row of B and A, we get the probability of A given B equals the probability of the intersection of A and B over the probability of B. Solving for the probability of the intersection of A and B, we get the probability of A given B times the probability of B. But what is the difference between the two intersections, the intersection of B and A and the intersection of A and B? In fact, they are the same. They correspond to the same region, the shaded region in the diagram. Therefore, the probability of the intersection of B and A equals the probability of the intersection of A and B. So we can equate the right-hand side of the two expressions. So we have the probability of B given A times the probability of A equals the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Suppose we want to compute the probability of B given A. So we can express this quantity as the probability of A given B times probability of B over the probability of A. And this is the base formula. Sometimes we may not know directly the probability of A. Instead, we know the conditional probability. So the probability of A can be expressed as the sum of the probability of the intersection of A and B prime and the probability of the intersection of A and B. So we can rewrite the probability of A as this expression by the law of total probabilities. And then using the conditional probability formula, we can express the probability of the intersection of A and B as the probability of A given B times the probability of B and the probability of the intersection of A and B prime as the probability of A given B prime times the probability of B prime. So here at the bottom of this line, we get the base formula. From the base formula, we can see that there's a relationship between the two conditional probability the probability of B given A and the probability of A given B. Sometimes we may not know one of this conditional probability or one conditional probability may be difficult to compute. And in this case, we can make use of the Bayes theorem to work out any of these two conditional probabilities, given that we know the marginal probability PA and PB respectively. Let's take a look at the general form of the Bayes theorem. Assume that event B1, B2 up to Bn are collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive. Then for any other event A for which the probability of A greater than zero, then we have this base formula probability of bk where k equals 1, 2 up to n, given event A has occurred, equals the probability of the intersection of bk and A over the probability of A. So using the conditional probability formula in the numerator, so we have the expressions, the probability of A given bk times the probability of bk, and then we can use the law of total probabilities to compute the probability of event A. So this is the base theorem. 
and recorded the law of total probability, we have this expression. Another way to look at the base formula is as follows. Okay, suppose we know the probability of B1, B2 up to Bn from occurring. So we know probability of B1, probability of B2, and probability of Bn. So we call this probability of Bk as the prior probability in the sense that it is assigned prior to the observation of any other relevant information, in this case, say event A. This probability do not take into account any information about event A. And now suppose we know that event A occurred. And then we can update the probability of the B1 B2 up to Bn occurring. So here we get the updated information. Event A has occurred. Then what is the probability that event B1 also occur? Or what is the probability that event Bk also occur? So from that, we can get the probability of B1 given A, probability of B2 given A, or any probability of BK given A. And this updated probability is called the posterior probability. This is the revised probability. These probabilities are assigned after obtaining additional information. For example, here, we already know that event A has occurred. All right, so this is the theory part of Bayes' theorem. Let's move on to an example. In a certain assembly plant, three machines, B1, B2, and B3, makes 30%, 45%, and 25% respectively of the product. It is known that from past experience, 3%, 1%, and 2% of the products made by each machine respectively are defective. And now suppose that a finished product is randomly selected. What is the probability that the product is defective? Let's convert all the numbers into probability statement. So let event D denotes the event that the product is defective, and event BI denotes the event that the product is made by machine BI. So here, I equals 1, 2, and 3. And from the question, we have the following. The probability of B1 equals 0 0.3, P of B2 equals 0 0.45, and P of B3 equals 0 0.25. And we also know that the probability of D given B1. If the product is made by machine B1, 3% of the product are defective. So we have the probability of D given B1 equals 0 0.03. Similarly, we have the probability of a defective item given that the product is produced by machine B2 equals 0 0.01, and then P of D given B3 equals 0 0.02. These are the information we can obtain from the example. And now, what is the probability that a finished product is defective? We need to find the probability of D. So to compute P of D, 
we make use of the law of total probability. P of D equals the probability of B1 and D plus the probability of B2 and D plus the probability of B3 and D. The probability that the product is produced by machine B1 and it is defective and the probability that the product is produced by machine B2 and it is defective plus the probability that the product is produced by machine B3 and it is defective. So we can compute all these probabilities. We can use the conditional probability formula and then plug in the corresponding numbers. We get the result. The probability that a finished product is defective equals 0 0.0185. And now suppose that a finished product is randomly selected. Given that the finished product is defective, what is the probability that the product is made by machine B2? So the probability we want to find is P of B2 given D. So this is not a conditional probability we have in the question. The relationship here is reversed. Given that the product is defective, we want to find the probability that this product is made by machine B2. Here we need to make use of the base formula. So the probability of B2 given D Using the base formula, this is equal to the probability of the intersection of B2 and D over the probability of D. So the probability of the intersection of B2 and D equals the probability of D given B2 times the probability of B2. These two probabilities can be obtained from the question. P of D given B2 equals 0 0.01 and P of B2 equals 0 0.45. And then in the denominator, the probability that the product is defective, P of D. We have already computed in the previous question using the law of total probability. We get PD equals 0 0.0185. So upon substitution, we get that if the product is defective, the probability that this product is made by machine B2 equals 0 0.2432. So this is an application of the Bayes theorem. So in summary, conditional probability takes into account information about the occurrence of one event, say the machine type in our previous question, to predict the probability of an other event. For example, if the product is defective or not. So from the previous question, we get the probability of D given B2 equals 0 0.01. So this conditional probability can be interpreted as if a product is made by machine 2, there is a 0 0.01 chance that the product is defective. By means of the Bayes theorem, this concept can be reversed and to determine the probability of a cause. So in this case, the machine type, once the effect has been observed, the effect is whether the item is defective or not. So here we already computed that 
the probability of B2 given D equals 0 0.2432. So given the effect, the product is a defective product. And what is the probability that this product is made by machine B2? So here, given that a product is defective, there is a 0 0.2432 chance that the product is made by machine two. So using the base theorem, we can reverse the condition in the conditional probability. In this case, P of D given B2 versus the P of B2 given D. All right, so this is everything in this video. In the next video, we will talk about using tree diagram to solve for probabilities. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.